Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we're going to be talking about the NHL draft coming up this Friday. Woo! I'm going to do a mock draft. A mock draft um, basically on who I would pick and who I think the other teams are going to pick. My draft history has been pretty good. I've actually, not about who, uh, what teams would pick so much, but which players would be better. For instance, uh, the year that uh, Patrick was drafted um, with uh, Nico Heischer, I had McCarr as the number one. And as it turns out, that was probably the right one. Uh, right pick, but that's just one instance. Overall, I did pretty well. Um, also, we are at the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Check it out, the website. It's amazing. We do every, uh, all four major sports, um, every team from all four major sports. We do content quite such like this, and uh, we're looking for content creators as well. So if you are a writer or a blogger or a blogger and you are interested in making a little bit of money doing what you do and you love one of the teams from the four major sports, comment in the comment section. We'll change emails and we'll see if we can use your services. Um, the NHL Pearls of Wisdom show I do from uh, Thursday and, or Tuesday and Thursday, 7.30 to 9.30. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, 3.30 to 5.30. All of those are Eastern. 7.30 to 9.30 and 3.30 to 5.30. We have much frolic over there. It's interactive. You can just tell me what you think and we talk back and forth. It's good times. Um, hit the subscribe and the bell. Let's see if we can get to 10 likes. 10 likes. It's amazing how few people, like how many people watch what I do, but very few people hit the like button. So try to hit 10 likes. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to do some just crazy stuff that I used to do before. And I got a lot of letters saying, why don't you do that anymore? I'll be doing it. So watch it straight to the end. Uh, so let's look at what we have for the draft. It's coming up right now uh, on Friday. Um, Buffalo will have the first pick. And there was some debate as to which uh, team was which player they were going to pick until the world championships and he just went off uh, Gallant who is now the coach of the New York Rangers and was the coach of the Vegas Vegas Knights Golden Knights and Florida Panthers but brought you know pretty darn good coach started out not playing the kid all that much but by the end of the uh, by the end of the tournament he was playing them like 30 minutes a night, and he was looking great. I just can't see Buffalo turning down a six foot five, 214-pound uh, defenseman that seems to be progressing as much as he is. How does he project? Um, he reminds me of Jay Bowmeister. Uh, that's the guy that I would pick off the top of my head as the most likely player that he could, he could become. But he may get more offense, and like I said, he's progressing so fast that he could even be better than that. There is no real elite player in this draft. The next two drafts, there are generational players, but not this one in particular. So, but he is good. He's probably going to be very good. With Seattle on the second pick, um, watch out for Edvinson here. He, Edvinson is the type of player that Ron Francis loves, loves, loves. Um, he is super strong defensively. Compete level is through the roof. Um, getting better and better all the time. He just loves those kind of players. However, I don't think he's going to be able to fade Matthew Beneers. Um, he said himself that he's going to build from defense, goaltending, defense, center in that order, which is the old school way of doing things. Um, he grabbed quite a few defensemen for Seattle uh, free agency with a, with Alexiak and Larson from uh, as as a free agent and picked some pretty solid defensemen overall. So I think here he's going to keep on working on that center position. And Matthew Beneers is also a lot like what Francis likes. Everybody loves this kind of guy. Not the hugest offensive guy, but he still could be a 50, 60 point guy. Um, much in the, much in the, uh, uh, 
mold as the Fili as Felino in Columbus now went to Toronto and sounds like he's going to Minnesota to be with his brother. Reminds me of that type of player. He loves those kind of players too. I think that's who he's going to pick. Uh, the Anaheim Ducks. Now, I would pick here, I think, and I think they will too, um, William Eklund. Um, simply because for them, if all things are equal, they they picked up Drysdale last uh, last year. They still have Manson. They still have Lindholm, who look like they're going to continue being there through this rebuild. Um, their defense is probably a little more more of their strength. Offense is something that they really need. Um, with uh, Zegris there now, it's looking a little better, but they could still use a lot of help. William Eklund had put up 23 points in uh, 41 games in Sweden, which is fantastic for an 18-year-old. Uh, better than many of the players picked last year. So a year younger, in fact, all the players. He, he was the, I think he was the uh, rookie of the year in Sweden. So uh, highest, definitely the highest scoring. So Alex uh, Holtz was one of the ones from New Jersey. He outscored, uh, outpointed Holtz this year. Very slick guy, smart, plays both ways great. I think that's going to be the pick for the Anaheim Ducks there. So that would leave New Jersey to take Hughes to go with the brother Hughes. So they can have both the Hugheses here. A um, little bit concerned that Brant Clark is available here too. New Jersey needs defense like crazy, although they did a really good move picking up Graves from Colorado recently. Um, I think it's just going to be too hard not to take the two, keep the two Hughes brothers together here. It's really good for contract talks to be able to have brothers together. They generally like to stay playing together and will take a little bit less to do so. I think that pushes it over the edge and they end up taking Hughes. Honestly, I think Brant Clark is the better, better uh, defenseman there. Um, but I think the because of all those things I said, I think they'll end up going with Hughes. Columbus. Now, watch them go off the board a little bit here. I think Columbus is going to take Kent Johnson out of Michigan as well. Three Michigan guys, by the way. Bernier is also from Michigan. And uh, that was another reason why I said I figured they'd take Owen, uh, Owen Power. He's from... All right, he's playing in Michigan. I do believe he's from Mississauga. He's from Mississauga, Ontario, which is not far from Buffalo. And that is going to be a huge advantage for them. Buffalo's really going to be looking for guys that have that want to be there. And he this that would be a big bonus for him to want to be there. Anyways, Johnson is one of the slickest guys in the draft. Uh his he put up like almost a point a game in college. Uh this year, which is awesome. The bad, the downside to Johnson is he's only 167 pounds at six one, so he, he's got a lot of growth to do. Defensively, he hasn't figured it out yet. He, he's more of a project than a lot of these other guys, but his high upside. Uh, I just think Columbus, especially how badly they need centers and electric centers at that. That they'll, that's a guy they're going to go for. Um, he might be great for Lion A. Um, also, they have a tendency to go off the board. One thing, Kent Johnson, everything I'm hearing about him was the same things that we were, we were hearing about Peterson in his draft. And he reminds me a lot of him. So I'm going off the board a bit. I'm saying they go with Peterson. Now Detroit. Um this could be the year that Detroit goes for their goaltender in Jesper Wallstadt. For one thing, Detroit loves Swedes. Uh, they love Swedes because the Swedish culture is very family orientated. You get a lot of Swedes in your room and they have a tendency to build a fa family atmosphere in the room. Um, the, that's what I do believe that they, why they pick a lot of Swedish players. Uh, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, they desperately need a goaltender. If they don't go there, they'll go with Brant Clark that I was just talking about here. They definitely need some defense. They definitely need a right-hand defenseman. Um, it's tough. It's a 50-50 for me. I'm going to say they take the Swede, though. 
I'm going to say they take the goaltender here, which was pushing Brent Clark quite a bit down in the uh, draft further than I think he should. But it's very difficult because a lot of these players are very close to each other in this draft. Um, a lot of times, a lot of these players weren't seen a lot last year, although the college players were seen more. Brant Clark did play uh, in Slovakia last year, so they would have seen him a little more. But I'm going to, I just have a lean that that's the direction they're going to go. Now, um, now we go to, uh, Sorry, I'm, now I'm kind of confused because I uh, was, did I? Yeah, Eklund was already picked, sorry. Um, now we go to San Jose. And San Jose here, I do believe, although it would be really tough not to take Dylan Gunther, if Brant Clark's available, their defense prospects are porous. I think they, that Brant Clark is the guy that they go with here. LA Kings, um, if they have this pick, there is a lot of talk that they're looking to trade this pick. If they trade it, my, my, I'm thinking that it'll probably end up being Tampa Bay and getting one of Palat or Kalorn or something of that nature from there. They, Tampa Bay would definitely die for this pick right now. They'd be happier than heck that they could get rid of that cap space that they need to get rid of and get this pick here. If it's Tampa Bay or uh, if it's Tampa Bay, I could see them going for Simone Edvins in here. If it's LA, I think they'll take a chance on uh, Dylan Gunther. They're not really needing uh, uh, centers so much. Although if they think McTavish is way better than Gunther, then they'll take the best player available. Best player available will always be there, but... They need wingers a lot. Dylan Gunter's slick, man. Super slick. He looks like Johnny Goudreau in a lot of ways. I don't know if he has the same offensive upside, but he's certainly a 25 to 70 point player possibly in the NHL, and they desperately need that. Um, now with Vancouver, Vancouver will be upset that uh, Columbus picked Johnson because um, they're, they're for sure – I've talked, I've heard lots of them want taking Johnson if he's available. They have said that they're going to take a center, which leaves them with, to me, Mason McTavish. Uh, could go off the board and take Cole Sillinger here, but I really think they're going to take Mason McTavish. Mason McTavish, believe it or not, played in Switzerland because his father, Craig McTavish, was coaching there at the time. But he's pretty much Canadian. He's big. He plays Every way you can think of. Um, he is a huge utility guy. His offense just keeps on getting better and better. He's gone up this draft really fast. He's a lot like what they already have in Horvat, but I don't know why. They're talking about picking a center. So there has been talk about trading Horvat or Besser, which is crazy to me but I would imagine it's because they're they look in the future and they're not going to be able to pay for them down the road anyways so that's something interesting to look in the long term it's so surprising here that I've got Simone Edmondson not picked yet uh, but uh, as it turns out I think now that it would have to go to Ottawa Senators and uh they they can they could add anywhere right now and uh, this could be the steal of the draft. Ottawa knows very well about picking defensemen. They're very good at picking defensemen. Um, Simone Edvidson, at the very least, is going to be a solid defensive defenseman. But he works on his game exhaustively. Probably the hardest working guy in this draft. His upside is unknown. It, it really could be. He could be up in Norse candidate levels. He's got that kind of competitive nature to get better. So I think that's who uh, Ottawa will take with that pick. Now we get into some really interesting areas here because we have uh, we have uh, some player like we pretty much picked the top ten. They just went in different orders. All of these guys. Because they haven't been able to see them so much, I wouldn't doubt that there's a lot of off-the-board stuff that happens here. Um, but I'm sticking with what I got. 
Now, the guy that they have at 13 here in Kosa, I think could very well be the pick for the Blackhawks, but I'm guessing that they're going to not go with goaltending with Lankanen already there. They got a few goaltenders coming up as well. I could be wrong. If they think he's so much better than everybody else, they will probably go with him here. But my guess is with all of these guys available, I'm going to say they go with Cole Sillinger. Center left wing. He can play multiple positions. They love guys like that. Like his father, he can play all different ways. I would say even more. Um, I, I could say that he might even be better than his father in the long run. Um, that So that's our pick there. Uh, with the Philadelphia Flyers, they'll be ticked that Cole Sillinger is gone in this draft because I think that's exactly who they want. They need a goal scorer, but as it stands, they also need size through their lineup. Um, I could see them going off the board a little bit and taking Brendan Othman here. Um, Brendan Othman probably has the best shot in the draft. In fact, I think that's who I'm going to go with. I'm going to say they go off the board a little bit and take Brendan Othman. I've heard him all over the place anyways, but he's just a pure shooter. And they so much need a pure shooter. I think they'll take the risk and go that direction. And then we have the Dallas Stars. Um, Fabian Lizell is exactly what the Dallas Stars are all about. He's feisty. He can play um, He can play uh, right wing, and I, I think he can play left wing as well. But he's he just feels like a Dallas Star to me. Uh, so I think that's the direction they're going to go. And I think I'm going to stop here. But I will talk about a couple players that I think that could go off the board a little bit higher that maybe surprise you and reach up into the even the top 10. One of those, Carson Lambos has fell quite a bit. I think he might even go lower than that. Um, it's just, he did a bad year last year. So you're taking a bit of a risk that he's going to be able to rebound. But Carson Kuhlman's um, right-handed defenseman, for one thing, is a, that's, uh, a right-handed defenseman is hard to find. Um, he's probably one of the safer picks that you could you could pick here. He's likely going to play. The question is really how good is he going to be. But if somebody really thinks that his speed and being a right-hand defenseman, that they see a higher upside than a lot of other people do, I could see him going a lot higher. Um, Atu Ratti, of course, was con at, like this time last year, Atu Ratu, I should say, uh, was almost projected as a number one. There are a lot of teams that could just say that he had some maturity issues and his overall skill set and size may be too hard to avoid, and he could go up a lot higher than you would think. Uh, again, with Kosa, Kosa had a fantastic year last year. Um, uh, Kosa, as a goaltender, he could go almost anywhere. I could see a team that really needs goal, that really thinks that they need goaltending possibly the San Jose Sharks, um, could take a chance on him as a, as a backup uh, plan, for um, especially when they don't have any goaltending at all. Uh, I could see that happening, but I'm going to stick with what I, what I picked. And then Matthew Coronado as well. Um, he's small is the only real problem. He, is, he plays a lot bigger than he is. He put up, I believe, some killer points in the USHL. Going to take a look at it here if it allows me to. Uh, yeah, he's played 85 points in 51 games. Crazy good numbers. Crazy speed. He's one of those guys. He's like the small guy that doesn't get picked because he's small. And then three years down the road, you're looking at it going, how did we miss him? Uh, Chaz Lucic, of course. I didn't mention him because Philadelphia went off the board. I he could go. He raced up the the draft boards as well this last year, so he could go all, in a lot of places as well. Um, well, that's my third full forty two for the draft, boys and girls. I wanted to send out some pearls to some letters. So if you like the funny stuff, here we go. Uh, pearls. Uh, Diane Corner. Diane Corner from. Detroit, Michigan said, why don't you send pearls anymore? I used to send the pearls all the time. Here you go. I got 
and you said you asked for pink pearls, which are fantastic. So here we go. I'm going to send you out some pink pearls. Here you go. Ooh, all the way to Detroit. Helen spent time grinding those out all morning, so you can have them. There you go. You just soak in those, and they'll make you feel lovely, lovely. And Pearls of Wisdom necklaces. I have Pearls of Wisdom necklaces to our subscribers. Uh, Sumar Taban. Uh, Pachula from Greece. Uh, Gary Smith from Cornwall. You're getting a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace for subscribing to the channel. Sent to you by Hernandez and Melissa in the Perlocopter. It's been so long since I've actually done this. I might even jump in the Perlocopter with you and do a little Perlo dance for you. There we go. I'll have more than that. We'll be talking lots more about pants free living, uh, house of spanking, and all of that at the end of my next videos coming up. I'm bringing it back. So thank you for your letters. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Okay. Bye.